Ladies and gentlemen, we're privileged to have with us a man known around the world as the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. How are you, Jesus? Fine, thanks, and let me say it's great to be back. Why, after all this time, have you come back? Mostly nostalgia. Could you tell us a little about the first time you were here? Well, it's not much to tell. I think everybody knows the story by now. I was born on Christmas, and actually that always bothered me, because I only got one present. You know, if I was born a couple of months earlier, I would have got two presents. But look, I'm not complaining. After all, it's only material goods. There's a story that there were three wise men. Well, there were three kings who showed up. I don't know how wise they were. They didn't look very wise. They said they followed a star. That don't sound wise to me. Didn't they bring gifts? Yeah, that's right. Gold, frankincense, and I believe myrrh, which I never did find out what that was. You don't happen to know what myrrh is, do you? Well, I believe it's a reddish-brown bitter gum resin. Ah, oh, great. Just what I need. What am I going to do with a gum resin? I'd rather have the money. That way I could buy something I need. You know, something I wouldn't normally buy for myself. Well, what would that be? Oh, I don't know. A bathing suit? I never had a bathing suit. Maybe a Devo hat? Possibly a bicycle. I really could have used a bicycle. Do you realize all the walking I did? I must have crossed Canaan six or eight times, up and down, north and south, walking and talking, doing miracles, telling stories. Tell us about the miracles, Jesus. How many miracles did you perform? Well, leaving out the loaves and the fishes, I would say a total of 107 miracles. Well, why not the loaves and fishes? Well, technically, that one wasn't a miracle. It wasn't? No, nah. Turns out a lot of people were putting them back. They were several days old. And besides, not all those miracles were pure miracles anyway. Well, what do you mean? If, if they weren't miracles, what were they? Well, some of them were parlor tricks, optical illusions, mass hypnosis. Sometimes people were just hallucinating. I even used acupressure. That's how I cured most of the blind people, acupressure. So not all of the New Testament is true? Nah, some of the gospel stuff never happened at all. It was just made up. Luke and Mark used a lot of drugs. Luke was a physician and he had access to drugs. Matthew and John were okay, but Luke and Mark would write anything. Well, what about raising Lazarus from the dead? First of all, he wasn't dead, okay? He was hungover. I've told people that. But in the Bible, you said he was dead. No, I said he looked dead. I says, geez, Peter, this guy looks dead. You see, Lazarus was a very heavy sleeper, plus the day before we had been to a wedding feast and he had put away a lot of wine. Oh, was that the wedding feast at Cana, where you changed the water into wine? I don't know. We went to an awful lot of wedding feasts in those days. But did you ever really turn water into wine? Not that I know of. One time I turned apple juice into milk, but I don't recall the water and wine. All right, speaking of water, let me ask you about another miracle. What about walking on water? Did that really happen? Oh, yeah, that was one that really happened. You see, the problem was I could do it and the other guys couldn't. They were jealous. Peter got so mad at me, he had these special shoes made, special big shoes that if you started out walking real fast, you could stay on top of the water for a while. Then, of course, after a few yards, bada boom, down he goes right into the water. He sinks like a rock. That's why I called him Peter. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. Well, that brings up the apostles. Uh, what can you tell us about the apostles? They smelled like bait, but they were a good bunch of guys. Thirteen of them we had. Thirteen? The, the Bible says there were only twelve. Well, that was according to Luke. I told you about Luke. Actually, we had thirteen. We had, let's see, we had Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, that's a different James, Thaddeus, how many, how many is that now? That's, that's ten. Okay, uh, Simon, Judas, and Red. Red? Yeah, Red the Apostle. Red the Apostle doesn't appear in the Bible. Nah, Red kept pretty much to himself. He never came to any of the wedding feasts. He was a little strange. He thought the Red Sea was named after him. And what about Judas? Don't get me started on Judas, a completely unpleasant person, okay? Well, what about the other apostles? Say, for instance, Thomas. Was he really a doubter? 
Believe me, this guy, Thomas, you couldn't tell him nothing. He's always asking me for ID. Soon as I would see him, he would go, you got any ID? To this day, he doesn't believe I'm God. And are you God? Well, partly. I'm a member of the Trinity. Yes, in fact, you're writing a book about the Trinity. That's right. It's called Three's a Crowd. As I understand it, it's nothing more than a thinly veiled attack on the Holy Ghost. Listen, it's not an attack, okay? It happens I don't get along with the Holy Ghost, so I leave him alone. That's it. What he does is his business. Well, what's the reason? Well, first of all, he's a wise guy. Every time he shows up, he's something different. One day he's a dove, another day he's a tongue of fire, always fooling around. I don't bother with the guy. I don't want to know about him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to talk to him. Well, then let me change the subject. Is there really a place called hell? Oh, yeah, there's a hell, all right. There's also a heck. It's not as severe as hell, but we've got a heck and a hell. What about purgatory? No, I don't know about no purgatory. We got heaven, hell, heck, and limbo. Well, what is limbo like? I don't know. No one's allowed in there. If anybody was in there, it wouldn't be limbo. It would just be another place. Oh, I see. Well, getting back to your previous visit, what can you tell us about the Last Supper? Well, first of all, if I'd have known I was going to be crucified, I would have had a bigger meal. You never want to be crucified on an empty stomach. As it was, I had a little salad and some veal. The crucifixion must have been terrible. Ah, oh, yeah, it was awful. Unless you went through it yourself, you could never really know how painful it was. And tiring. It was very, very tiring. But I think more than anything else, it was embarrassing. You know, in front of all those people to be crucified like that. But I guess it redeemed a lot of people. I hope so. It would be a shame to do it for no reason. Were you scared? Ah, oh, yeah. I was afraid it was going to rain. I thought for sure I would get hit by lightning. One good thing, though, while I was up there, I had a really great view. I could actually see my house. There's always a bright side. And then three days later, you rose from the dead? Huh? On Easter Sunday, you rose from the dead, didn't you? Not that I know of. I think I would remember something like that. I do remember sleeping a long time after the crucifixion. Like I said, it was very tiring. I think what might have happened was I passed out and they thought I was dead. We didn't have such good medical people in those days. You know, it was mostly volunteers. And according to the Bible, 40 days later you ascended into heaven. Pulleys. Ropes, pulleys, and a harness. I think it was Simon who came up with this great harness thing that went under my toga. You couldn't see it at all. Since that day, I've been in heaven, and all in all, I would have to say that while I was down here, I had a really good time, except for the suffering. And what do you think about Christianity today? Well, I'm a little embarrassed by it, you know. Jeez, I wish they would take my name off of it. If I had the whole thing to do over, I would probably start one of those Eastern religions like Buddha. Buddha was smart. That's how come he's laughing. So you wouldn't want to be a Christian? Nah, I wouldn't want to be a member of any group whose symbol is a man nailed onto some wood, especially if it's me. Buddha's laughing. Meanwhile, I'm on the cross. I have a few more questions, do you mind? Hey, be my guest. How often do I get here? Are there really angels? Well, not as many as we used to have. Years ago, we had millions of them. Today, you can't get the young people to join. It got too dangerous with all the radar and the heat-seeking missiles. But what about guardian angels? Are there such things? Yes, we still have guardian angels, but now, with the population explosion, it's one angel for every six people. Years ago, everybody had his own angel. But changing the subject, do you really answer prayers? No. First of all, what with the sunspots and radio interference, a lot of prayers don't even get through. And between you and me, we just don't have the staff to handle the workload anymore. In the old days, we took pride in answering every single prayer. But like I said, there were less people then. And in those days, people prayed for something simple, to light a fire, to catch a yak, something like that. But today, you got people praying for hockey teams, for longer fingernails, to lose weight. We just can't keep up. Well, I think we're about out of time. I, I certainly want to thank you for visiting with us. Hey, no sweat. Do you have any words of advice? You mean like how to remove chewing gum from a suede garment, something like that? 
No, I mean spiritual advice. Well, I don't know how spiritual it is, but I'd say one thing is, don't give your money to the church. They should be giving their money to you. Well, thank you, Jesus, and good night. Well, good night. Thanks for having me on here today. And by the way, in case anyone is interested, Bell Bottoms will be coming back in the year 2015. Ciao!